Hello friends and happy Autism Acceptance Month. In this video I'm going to be shouting about some books by autistic writers and books that feature autistic characters and just generally celebrating the contributions of autistic writers to the literary scene. Before I get started I do want to give a big thank you to Lily over at Literary Lily who um, posted a tweet that gave me the inspiration for this video. Um, if you're not already do go sub to Lily. Lily has some really nice reading vlogs and a very relaxing kind of demeanour um, and I just really enjoy uh, Lily's content. Lily also recently shared two videos that are specifically about autism. Uh, the first was like a Q&A and the second one was about how autism affects her reading and both are really really worth watching so I will leave links to those down below as well as a link to Lily's channel so do go check that out. When I came to compile this list I was quite surprised by how many book titles just came to me off the top of my head and I'm hoping I haven't missed any out um, like of books that are on my radar or that I have read but if you think of any other books that I miss out here or you just want to shout about and share the love for any of the books I mentioned do give me a comment down below and let's chat about it a bit more. So there's two sections to this video. The first is books I have read and the second is books I haven't read yet but I'm very excited about and keen to read soon. So I'll start with the books that I have read. The first book that I want to talk about is a collection of writing from autistic writers and it's called Stim and it's edited by Lizzie Huxley Jones and this is a like really brilliant collection. Uh, there's a little quote in it and it's something like there's a universally acknowledged truth that once you've met one autistic person you've met one autistic person and I think that really speaks to not just the variety of autistic people and autistic experiences but also how that's reflected in this collection it's very varied in terms of even like the types of writing that feature but also the people's stories and how different people's experiences have been. While I loved like a lot of the collection there are two pieces that really like stick with me and um, the first is one called Becoming Less by Robert Shepard and it's about mental illness and trauma and eating disorders and cell keys. It's just an absolutely like beautiful piece um, and it really spoke to me personally. And the second one is The Lost Mothers by Rachel Lucas, which I thought was really, really beautiful as well. There was so much in this collection though to talk about and to reflect on and think about. And I just feel like it's such a beautiful collection. The second book I want to talk about is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is a romance novel that centers on a autistic man and his Vietnamese love interest. Um, his mother has set them up to be a love interest um, and it's kind of following their journey and like navigating romance, navigating relationships and um, for the female protagonist it's also about kind of finding her place in an unfamiliar country. Some of the things I loved about this book were like how they communicated with each other and also like how they kind of negotiated and just kind of like how their relationship developed. I just thought it was really, really beautiful and sweet and I really, really enjoyed this read. Back to non-fiction, the third book I want to recommend is The Electricity of Every Living Thing by Catherine May. Now, this is a memoir about Catherine May's experience of coming to terms with her diagnosis and um, kind of learning how to kind of find coping mechanisms. And um, she's come to the realization that a lot of things are becoming more and more difficult in life um, and more and more overwhelming and she wants to kind of reconnect and understand why that is and so she takes this 630 mile walk um, and she does it in sections but the idea is that through the walking she comes to kind of learn more about herself, spend time with herself um, and just kind of reconnect. It's very very beautiful, it kind of reinforced to me this idea of like you need to slow down more in life and like connect with yourself and with your body and, and with your mind and um, it was a very kind of life affirming reading experience. I really enjoyed it and it's one that I would highly recommend. The next book is called Uncomfortable Labels and it's by Laura Kate Dale and this is a memoir about um, the, the sort of subheading is My Life as a Gay Autistic Trans Woman. Um, and it's just a really quite touching memoir. I read this about 
two years ago, but it has stuck with me. In this book, Laura explores labels in general, um, in terms of like the labels that she was given at birth, uh, labels that she's chosen herself, labels that she's been given. Um, and it kind of talks about all these identities. Laura also talks about difficulties in terms of fitting in, um, in terms of belonging and stuff like that. It's very, very beautiful. It's unlike anything else I have read previously or since. Um, I had to go back and look at my review because it's been about two years since I read this one. But um, my only issue with this one was that the time frame changes frequently. So it's like past, present, um, sort of changeability. And I think at the time I found that difficult to follow. So if you go in prepared that that's the kind of reading experience that this memoir has, um, I think you will really, really enjoy it. In my review from two years ago, I write, all in all, a story worth hearing regardless of how it's written. And so there you go. The next book I want to talk about is actually a graphic memoir and it is Invisible Differences by Julie Dachet. And this is translated from the French. I don't actually know who the translator is, so I do apologize. But this is a really, really beautiful uh, memoir and it really captures a kind of the feeling of overstimulation and I think it's going to be quite accessible to people who are unfamiliar with autism. I think it will really help people to kind of understand the feelings of being overwhelmed by social uh, situations, by being overwhelmed by um, like fabrics and um, the kind of sensory overload that a lot of autistic people experience. I think this book really shows that very well, at least I felt like it was well captured. I experience sensory overload sometimes because I am a highly sensitive person. So I related a lot to that in this book. Um, and I remember feeling very emotional while reading this book. Um, and I just thought it was really, really beautiful. It's also got a really nice art style. So in general, if you like graphic memoirs or graphic novels and things like that, you might enjoy this book. The next book is Convenience Store Women and that is by Siaka Murata and that is translated by Ginny Tapley Takamori. And this is a really, really beautiful book. It was one of my favourite books of 2019, I think I read it in. Um, it follows an autistic woman as she's trying to kind of navigate the world um, and trying to understand why she finds things difficult and she kind of really enjoys routine, finds it really helpful to help her cope with everyday life. And so she works in a convenience store because it, there is routines, there are rules. Whenever she meets a customer, there's known social um, rules and social interactions. She knows what to say. She's been taught what to say. And that's something that she finds really helpful to help her cope. Um, but outside of her, there's all these influences that are telling her she needs to get a better job or, you know, meet a partner and fulfill all of these like socially acceptable things. And um, she really struggles with this and it just basically follows her struggle. Um, and I won't say a lot about it because there is quite a lot packed into it. It's quite a short novel, but it will leave a big impression. It certainly did on me and um, it's one that I think about really really regularly so definitely worth a read. And this next bunch are ones that are on my TBR so I haven't yet read them. The first up is The Reasons I Jump by Naoki Higashida and translated by K.A. Yoshida. I hope I have said all of those names right. Um, this is a memoir about a 13 year old boy's experience of autism and it's about his inner voice. Um, I know that David Mitchell did the introduction to this book or at least the copy I have. David Mitchell's done the introduction and I think from an interview I was watching David Mitchell has had um, some involvement in the translation process of this book um, but I just think it sounds like a very interesting title. It sounds like one that will be very insightful and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Next up is another book by Helen Huang and that is The Kiss Quotient. And I believe this follows a woman called Stella who has Asperger's um, and it's basically her kind of navigating the dating world as far as I understand. Um, I just recently got this at the library so I'm really excited to read it. It's another romance novel um, and I'm hoping it's gonna be as good as The Bride Test. I also recently bought an audiobook um, of Odd Girl Out by Laura James and I'm very excited about this one. It's a memoir I think basically of Laura James growing up um, and kind of 
navigating the world. I think it's memoir, I think it's non-fiction, but it sounded really good and I think the narration was really nice. So I'm looking forward to reading that and enjoying it. I also have both of Elle McNichol's uh, books on my radar. The first one is A Kind of Spark and the second one is I think called Show Us Who You Are. Um, they both sound brilliant and I'm just really excited to read them. I think they're middle grade um, and it's like kind of featuring autistic protagonists. Um, I just think they sound brilliant. I've heard nothing but good things. So I am curious to see what they're like myself. And if you saw my favourite books of 2020 video, you will saw that I love The Deep by River Solomon. Um, and I have heard that An Unkindness of Ghosts, another title by them, has autistic rep in it. So that's a book that I've put on this, this list. I have that book on my books to read in 2021 list anyway. Uh, but when I realised that also the book has um, an autistic character, I thought, brilliant. So uh, do check out River Solomon's work. I really, really think they have a beautiful writing style and um, I would definitely recommend The Deep. Um, and I've heard nothing but good things about An Unkindness of Ghosts as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And the final one I heard about through Mercedes at Mercy's Bookish Musings, I think is their channel name. And that book is A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. And this follows a woman who is on a night out, I believe, or kind of at a party. And it's basically, she's an autistic woman and she's basically kind of speaking about her experiences and her feelings throughout the night as she goes through this night and there's all these people uh, who she's meeting and um, how the interactions pan out um, through an autistic lens. I think it sounds really fascinating um, and it sounds like an in-depth character study which um, I'm really interested in. So I'm looking forward to reading that and seeing what I think about it but I know Mercedes really enjoyed it and I think um, if I remember rightly, posted a full review of it. So I will link that down below if you want to check that out. So that's all for this video. Um, I talked about 12 different books by autistic writers or featuring autistic characters. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching this and maybe got some good book recommendations. Do let me know if you have read any of these books or if you have any other recommendations for books by autistic writers or featuring autistic characters. This is something that I really like to read about um, and I would appreciate more recommendations. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.